Welcome back to the all new Step 2 version of 12 Days in March. Here is a summary of the video format in case you are viewing these presentations out of sequence. And with no further ado, let's get started. Tricked ya! For those of you keeping score at home, the babies have arrived for the season and they are precious. I just hope I don't get rabies before completing the Step 2 series. And with that, let's launch this brief presentation with only two lovely questions. Good luck! And here is question number two. And that's a wrap, so let's get started. Here we have a patient presenting with wrist pain and swelling, and the NBME has done the heavy lifting for us. They've done the arthrocentesis and presented a rhomboid crystal with positive birefringence on polarized microscopy. So in one fell swoop, we have the diagnosis calcium pyrophosphate crystal deposition, which is the second and less common crystalline arthropathy. The principal differential diagnosis will be gout, but they are readily distinguished by synovial fluid analysis and the radiograph, as you will see. But they go on to ask a second order question. What was the most likely predisposing condition? Well, that's a little different. So let's scrub the vignette to see if they offer any clues. So we have wrist pain and swelling, but there is no trauma, so that's off the list. It is a recurrent disorder and responded to naproxen. This is informative and consistent with the presentation of CPPD. The past medical history includes hypertension, and in this instance, it gets us to the medication hydrochlorothiazide. Whereas hydrochlorothiazide is a risk factor for gout, it is not a cause of CPPD. So we'll just stash that one away, bearing in mind they probably included it to make us think the patient has gout. Insofar as nephrolithiasis, I would suggest that you keep your antennae up when you see this diagnosis buried in the past medical history. It is often a signal or clue to the presence of hyperparathyroidism. It's not automatic, but it usually means something. So let's return to our question, but I do want to highlight this classic presentation of CPPD. We have an older patient with an acute and recurrent monoarthritis that is responsive to nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. In addition, they offer a classic synovial fluid analysis. Insofar as our answer options, None of these are associated with CPPD. I did include a couple of comments for your review. But the big ticket item predisposing to calcium pyrophosphate crystal deposition is hyperparathyroidism, a classic step two derivative. And here are the key takeaways you should have for CPPD. Note the older demographic, the description of an acute and recurrent monoarthritis with asymmetric joint involvement to distinguish it from rheumatoid arthritis. For treatment, the therapy is principally abortive with nonsteroidals, colchicine, and glucocorticoids. But the key and subtle derivatives are the disease associations, hyperparathyroidism, and hemochromatosis. You should stash these two little nuggets away. All right, let's move on to the next question. Here we have an older patient with pain and swelling in the knee. Stiffness is reported. I will caution you that they throw around stiffness to make you think osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. Be sure to always interpret stiffness in the context of the vignette. They go on to describe an effusion, but then give a graphic pointing to an abnormality and describe it as a radio-opaque line within the hyaline cartilage. That radio-opaque line represents deposition of calcium pyrophosphate crystals within the hyaline cartilage, and I would suggest you be familiar with both the graphic and radiographic description. They are both classic for CPPD, which may also be referred to as chondrocalcinosis. The summary document at the end of this presentation clarifies the nomenclature of this disorder. So based upon the radiograph, we've made our diagnosis, but they go on to ask the derivative question, what will be seen on synovial fluid analysis? I would again caution you to accept the question writer on their terms, and specifically, this patient does have some joint space narrowing, but they aren't asking us the synovial fluid analysis in a patient with osteoarthritis. The question writer is clearly inquiring about CPPD based upon the clinical presentation and radiograph. And the answer is C, an inflammatory joint fluid revealing crystals and no organisms. So what are the take homes for this case? Be familiar with the radiographic description and the synovial fluid analysis. This is a recurrent theme. And with this brief video, we've completed our curriculum on the crystalline arthropathies. I would encourage you to review this summary to clarify the nomenclature and the important association between CPPD and osteoarthritis. So here again, I'll slowly scroll through the summary document for those of you who might not have access to the website. And that'll do it. I will again encourage and welcome your feedback as we launch this new series. Please send any and all comments 
good or bad, to Howard at 12 Days in March. Many thanks and best of luck with your studies.